So good afternoon to everybody. We would be just starting shortly. Madam, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. Hello, am I audible now? We cannot able to listen you. But I am on. Am I audible now? No, yes, we yes, cannot able... hear you. Yeah, I am able to hear you. Okay, I think I should join again then. Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much.
I would request everybody to kindly be patient for another two or maximum five minutes because our speaker uh, would be joining in. Yeah, I can see him. Hello. Yes, I regret for joining late actually. I had just uh, finished one more uh, meeting was there. So I'm sorry to keep the entire team waiting. No, yeah. no, that's okay, sir. That's okay. I request uh, our IT team to kindly make sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So a very good afternoon, afternoon rest. everybody. On behalf of Symbiosis Skills and Professional University, and IIC Institution Innovation Council, I, the Vice President of IIC, Ruchu Kothyala, would like to extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Samir Kumar Shah, who is consultant radiologist and founder of Canpic Medical and Education Foundation, Pune, India. He is also the chairperson of Canpic Medical Research and Technologies Private Limited. He has a vast 22 years of experience in healthcare industry and in the radiology for approximately 11 years. His major career interests interest are as in the key person to start innovation clubs for various ventures like health insurance companies, innovators, and he has promoted affordable innovations in healthcare. He has also been a key member, been a part of policy matters in healthcare domain with uh, the group such as World Bank Group regarding the policy matter and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He has been mentoring the healthcare startups company and promoted integration of academics, research and services in the healthcare as well. Sir is also the part of professional societies as a member, like Health Committee, IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Mumbai, member of Tech Forum, Pune, India, member Editorial Board, Express Healthcare Publications, Mumbai, India. He has also worked at Ruby Hall Clinic, as in the past, and as registrar at BYL Nair Hospital. His Qualifications are UNESCO training as in the fellowship for a research project that is early cancer detection. And his qualifications are Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery, as well as Diploma in Radiology. So a very, very warm welcome to you, sir. And we will request you to kindly deliver the session on converting innovation into a startup. Over to you. Many thanks, thanks for this uh, long and uh, detailed introduction, Ruchu. I thank uh, the entire team of Symbiosis, Mr. Desai, and all of you for this opportunity. And it's a good experience to connect uh, to the innovators, to the students. And uh, I'm really glad that I'm, you know, uh, interacting with you all today. So allow me to share my screen. Yeah, the rights are given to you. I hope there should not be a problem. But still, you can check and confirm it to us. Sure. Just meet us. Yeah, so we can see the screen. Yeah. yeah. What you are sharing. Yeah. Fine. Well, thank you. So, sir, we can't. Today, huh? Sorry. You are able to see the screen? screen so many powerpoints and pdf that oh sorry sorry sorry, sorry just just, just a minute i'll do one okay. thing i'll just stop and uh, again share it again i hope it is fine now yeah it is fine yeah, yeah. we can see it you can change it to the slide mode yeah thing. slide mode yeah 
sorry for the inconvenience. No, no, that's it. Yeah. So I'll be discussing about converting innovations into a startup. Of course, you have many uh, more domain experts to guide you on this aspect in many ways. So I'll be focusing upon how to promote affordable innovations in healthcare and how do we promote low cost manufacturing in our country and how it is necessity and what are the opportunities in this regard. So also we'll be discussing about role of health insurance sector in catalyzing affordability in healthcare and the related innovations and integration of academics, services and research at innovation clubs. I'll discuss these things in detail. Dr. Kalam is an inspiration for all of us. He has ignited in millions of innovative minds in this country and world over. And of course, I had a great privilege to interact with him. I mention about him because uh, he has been a great source of inspiration for all of us. And he was supposed to be a a uh, patron for a platform which we are in a process to create. Of course, we had some interactions on these policy matters and certain uh, our inputs with World Bank Group, Gates Foundation, USA India, Niti Ayo, which is a planning commission for our country and national authority, and also the insurance regulatory authorities in our country. So what are the problem statements we should be addressing during the pandemic and post-pandemic situation? Of course, there have been many ongoing pro, uh, issues and problems in healthcare domain. I'm trying to look at it in a broad way. Let's say rising cost of healthcare services, which is a global uh, challenge, which is a global problem. You Let it be in America, let it be in India or any sub-Saharan African country. Cost is a major limiting factor for implementing any program or any uh, kind of infrastructure or anything of that sort. Accessibility to healthcare is also a challenge. Health insurance penetration is also a challenge and we rely on heavy imports, even in India. So the costs increase up to 10% per year and 20% for cancer treatment. So a cancer patient ends up paying double the cost for treatment in five years. And about 100 million individuals are pushed below the poverty line every year due to medical expenses. And again, the GDP allocation uh, has been uh, poor in terms of healthcare expenditure, and there is an age-old demand to increase it since many, many years, many decades rather. And 70 to 80 percent of the individuals spend out of the pocket in many countries, including that in India. And again, there is a traditional way of solving this uh, problem in terms of rigorous financial management, efficient operational performance, outcome-based care, and so and so on. But again, these approaches have helped out a small segment of the population and we have to cater to the masses. We are a country of 140 crore individuals almost. So again, we have a, one more challenge that health insurance penetration is being poor and the cost of premium, high cost of premium also is a major limiting factor in this regard. So considering all these problem statements, how do we address them and how do we look at them and what are the opportunities? Just to mention, as I said, that 75% of the world's population has no access to any diagnostic imaging, including X-ray sonography. So if you go to some of the sub-Saharan countries, they cannot access even these. So accessibility is also a challenge. And we, if we take an example of medical device segment, even in our country, we import about 80% of the devices and there is a huge demand supply gap. And again, they may or may not be adapted in our ecosystem. Secondly, the market share is dominated by America and Europe, which catered about 75%. And China has a market share of 18%. They earned a revenue of $400 trillion almost during the COVID pandemic situation. And we have yet to complete a figure of 1% as far as our market share in medical devices goes. So this is an area where we have a greater scope to look at. Again, what are the challenges in medical device segment? We have lower penetration, accessibility, affordability is a challenge, low indigenous manufacturing is there, unmet funding requirements for innovators and entrepreneurs. We, of course, recently there is a paradigm shift in the policies and greater CSR spending is being done on these kind of innovations, but it has to scale up further. And there is a problem of brain drain. Our innovators, of course, for some other reason are going abroad and they work there and the same product becomes very, very expensive when we import them. So this is a kind of a vicious cycle we are caught in. And we need to definitely make our ecosystem more and more conducive to see that we come up with a lot of innovations which would make a significant economic impact and the 
um, you know, uh, come up with better clinical outcomes as far as the individuals or patients go. And again, there are the devices which are not fit for, for rural or remote areas. So again, delivering healthcare services, there is a major challenge. Of course, solutions are being offered, but again, we need to put an organized effort. And uh, as far as the uh, medical device industry goes, it's on an average 400 to 500 billion dollars on a global scale. Our uh, medical device industry in India is around three to four billion dollars. And again, it contributes to less than 5% of the India's 100 billion dollar healthcare segment, segment, which is again growing day by day. And post pandemic situation definitely is going to grow further. And what are the uh, reasons of increase in the cost of healthcare and why these affordable innovations are necessary. We, of course, we can come up with cost cutting innovations and uh, solve these problems. But again, we need uh, to learn about the causes of this increasing cost. Growing an aging population is a major reason. The life expectancy has increased since inde independence. Now it is around uh, so anything between 65 to 70 years. Increasing the chronic illnesses, lifestyle-induced disorders like diabetes. Post-COVID, there would be a surge uh, of diabetic, uh, diabetes in our country. And even the diabetics may, it may result in uncomplicated complicated diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes kind of a situation. So there is uh, definitely a um, uh, major reason uh, why it is burdening uh, or increasing the cost, the chronic illnesses. Ambulatory costs are not covered by the health insurance sec uh, sector. So that is also a major challenge. Health insurance premiums have to increase because of the increasing cost, because they have to maintain the claim premium ratios. And again, apart from other factors, early stage detection is not being done. Also, although there are a lot of innovations which are coming up, uh, people are saying that there are certain programs, prevention is being focused. But again, we have to you know, upgrade in this area also. And again, we are, there is a huge dependency on import of medical devices, as I discussed in my last slide. Now, what is an affordable or disruptive innovation? These are need-driven innovations which meet the needs in resource-poor settings without compromising the quality. And Jaipur Food is a good example. Low-cost infant warmers also is an example. It could be a medicine, what we call drug in medical language, vaccine, a diagnostic method, a medicine delivering system, mobile-based application, medical machine like CT scan, MRI, or sonography. And of course, essentially, they have to be affordable, accessible, and well-creating. So who are to be involved? Now, why, why I'm discussing, I mean, uh, innovators and all the students here available here, the present here, they must be wondering why he's talking on this, this side of the innovation. I'm talking on this side because I want to, you know, send some strong messages to you all, wherein we have to, you know, connect bridges between amongst our the stakeholders and take this entire activity onto a next level and come up with greater cooperation. We have to involve medical professionals, doctors. It's very difficult to find a doctor getting involved in an innovation. We, if we look at countries like America and Europe, this percentage is much greater. So we are trying our best through this platform to involve doctors, healthcare professionals, and allied you know branches to involve in innovations. Rather, in some other way, uh, the innovators, entrepreneurs should connect with uh, the medical fraternity. Rather, this platform here, uh, I'll be discussing about it later, a digital platform on a global scale. We're trying to connect all these stakeholders on this common platform. We have to involve private sector investors policymakers, public sectors, non-profit uh, you know, uh, sector also. And uh, we have to see that venture philanthropy or something of that kind is, uh, you know, is promoted in this part of the world also. So we have to see that all these stakeholders are involved and they are connected, maybe through a common platform. So this is a platform we are trying to come up with. And uh, apart from this, of course, individual innovators and entrepreneurs should make an attempt to connect to the stakeholders in some other way. We are definitely here to help all of you uh, in some other way. So this will be a global platform. We are trying to involve all the stakeholders. We're trying to have something like an idea challenge program. And we have to uh, look at the various challenges, not only in our country, but world over, because it's an opportunity. And uh, definitely, if there is a repository or a, these challenges, if they're enlisted, it will be available to our innovators and entrepreneurs as a, a resource wherein they can look at it and you know information resource and come up with solutions. And again, uh, as I said, it's an opportunity. So innovation clubs. So we are discussing with even with your university on, on, on these lines, we should have innovation departments in health establishments like hospitals, polyclinics, medical colleges. And this will be uh, an engine for wealth creation and uh, come up uh, to come up with a lot of innovations and different solutions to the problems 
not only in that region, in the in that nation or world over. And again, we are trying to come up with a uh, health insurance sector as a catalyst. I'll discuss about it later. So how, why this approach? Why we are trying to see that we have to involve uh, all the uh, you know stakeholders from different segments, different sectors. Let's say we have a concept and we are working on it. Let's say some innovator from uh, Symbiosis University is working on it and he wants to go, or he or she wants to go for some financial support to begin with. So again, we go for some government uh, you know, funding like departments of science and technology, biotechnology and so and so on, as far as healthcare and related projects go or ICMR is there and uh, some other agencies uh, in our country. But again, we have to see that it comes from non-profit sector, philanthropists and other sectors as well. Maybe angel investment, is going on is, is ongoing, but it has to scale up, and we have to make uh, these av options available to the innovators and entrepreneurs at any point of time and easily. It should be an, uh, accessible through any platform or something of that kind. Now we have to let's say this project goes on, on to a next level and there is a successful business outcome, and well and good. If not, then again these stakeholders from non-profit or other uh, you know sectors could help until the project is commercially viable or it attains uh, its sustainability. Now, why this approach? What are the benefits of this approach? We can attain health outcomes for the individuals, for the people, for patients, as well as financial goals. And uh, the risk, uh, you know, which is involved in high risk, high R&D projects would also be minimized because uh, it will be a mandate of various other stakeholders from non-profit and other sectors. Herein, we can avoid early stage investment by, you know, a private sector and in terms of their, uh, you know, uh, risk involved. So we can see that this creates a win-win situation. And this, that is the reason this approach or this model is necessary. Through this model, we can overcome certain barriers. One is knowing who's who. It's very difficult to understand in spite of the, you know, so much of uh, advances in the technology, you Google out anything, you search uh, on the web and you have information at your fingertips. But even in that case, it's very difficult to know who's who. So we have a common pool of information, a platform. It will be easier for the innovators or other stakeholders to connect and network and uh, know who's who. And again, they can definitely connect with them and go on to the next level. Again, financial resources. In our country, we need uh, you know grants for early stage projects or even at a uh, uh, many other such uh, uh, organizations, SMEs, need grants rather than loans until and unless they go on to a next level and uh, you know uh, they are in a scale of phase. So for that uh, particular purpose, we are trying to see that something like health insurance sector, uh, you know, also looks at this and they create a large, uh, you know, kind of a uh, corpus fund which could benefit our innovators or entrepreneurs in some other way. So just to mention about the idea challenge program, for example, Ebola virus is a uh, infectious disorder, viral disorder prevalent in Central Africa. There's a mortality of 50%. There is no treatment, but there is a vaccine available. We have a rich tradition of Ayurveda in our country. Maybe somebody may come up with a phytochemical and maybe it could be developed uh, into a drug in future. So at least at this level, you know, we can solve this problem and be a, a solution provided to the problems world over. So we can take a look at this as an opportunity. Of course, this is not a prevalent disease in our country. And uh, so it could be ignored. As I discussed about the innovation clubs, maybe even in your university or in a hospital, which is affiliated with your university, maybe we can start with this kind of an activity, which would involve meeting of the concern, uh, you know, individuals and other stakeholders once in a month, and there is no expenditure involved on the part of the institution uh, in this regard. And this may lead to, uh, you know, uh, projects or ideas going to, on to a next level. We may involve other allied branches like engineering and other sciences also, and uh, see that these uh, activities are materialized. Secondly, the innovation club uh, may be an engine of wealth creation because, uh, I'll explain that why it is necessary because we have been providing services and working on this model since a long time. And we have not 
had something like a innovation, you know, for incubation center or a R&D department in any of the health establishments so far. So uh, our proposition is that we should have these kind of institutions, uh, these kind of centers in the health establishments. Now, this these innovation clubs will be having integration of healthcare services, academics, and research, uh, wherein we can utilize the same infrastructure or the human resource for either of the causes. And the wealth created through R&D could be utilized for services uh, to the needy patients and to support the eligible students uh, for medical education. And this is uh, a kind of a policy of cross-subsidization we can attain. So cost stabilization would also be involved because we are trying to focus primarily on cost-cutting innovations, affordable innovations. So both the things will go hand in hand. Through these activities, we have to, we can even support or make activities like public health insurance schemes sustainable. Ayushman Bharat, as we all know, is a very ambitious scheme by Government of India. So there are similar schemes like Medicare or Medicare in America and NHS is a healthcare service provider, government uh, service provider in the UK. So again, they have their own challenges in terms of cost or in terms of affordability, in terms of uh, sustainability and all. And therein, this kind of an approach through these innovation clubs which would create wealth on one hand and uh, reduce the cost on the other hand would definitely sustain these kind of programs. So we should look at the challenges faced by these you know, schemes also. And again, it's an opportunity for us. So that's why I just said that you know, this platform will open up many more such opportunities and our innovators and entrepreneurs have to look at these. Secondly, we are coming up with some kind of uh, softwares which could go for disease prevention, and to reduce the cost of treatment. And there are gaps in the clinical practice protocols in healthcare. We can bridge these gaps. And of course, technology is a great help uh, in, in doing that. To give an example, this is a you know, uh, disorder which wherein the cholesterol or lipids in, the, uh, in an individual go very high and uh, they get deposited in the blood vessels and they may lead to early premature uh, heart disease and the risk is 100-fold, and this could be genetically oriented. And we have a prevalence of about 15% in entire population in our country. So 15 to 20 crore of these individuals may have this problem. And they are spotted by you know, these whitish areas around their eyes. And of course, apart from many other causes, this is one of the major cause for it. And we can use technology. Of course, it is being used, something like elastography. I'll just, I'm just giving an example. And early detection of this, the stiffness of this, if not the thickness, thickness may change later. The stiffness may change early using something like elastography. And we can pick up this uh, disorder at an early stage and go for aggressive prevention protocol in these individuals and prevent complications like heart attack or paralysis in uh, these individuals. So we can attempt prevention in two cells and technology could be a great help. Maybe somebody from you may come up with a better solution than this also to detect these disorders at an early stage, maybe through some other uh, technological application. Now we have to consider all the local regional health issues. It's my appeal to all the students, all the you know attendees here to focus on this. Of course, it sounds too technical. It sounds like you know doctor is delivering something and he's focusing on his terms. He's talking about his terms and his domain only, but it is not so. I'm just trying to give the information from this side to all of you, wherein we have to, every word is important. Local regional health issues are the factors which modify the delivery of treatment, uh, the disease spectrum, accessibility to healthcare. So all these factors we have to consider, even the prevalence of certain disorders. Let's say sonography is being used in this country since last 30 years, and it is being used to detect defects in the fetuses, birth defects. So we have about 6 lakh babies born annually in India with birth defects. And this protocol we are religiously following since last 30 years. But at the same time, we have perhaps ignored, unknowingly ignored this major problem, which is uh, you know, has a larger prevalence that 35 lakh premature babies are born in India. A lot of uh, them of uh, uh, them die uh, during uh, the treatment phase, and we can prevent this by adding on color Doppler, uh, you know, studies during the pregnancy and prevent this by treating these patients with aspirin and some other treatment. And this is just to endorse. Of course, technology plays a role in this. Also, we can have some. Uh, AI based and automated some kind of a programs uh, using Dopplers too for better accuracy and so on and so on. But just to mention that we have ignored a problem unknowingly, which is six to seven times more prevalent 
than the birth defects. And we have been following these protocols just because it has been designed by some reputed uh, institutions in uh, of, uh, other countries like America or Europe. So we have to focus upon these factors in our country. Now, why we are talking about a non-traditional player like health insurance sector? We are trying our best to see that health insurance sector being a dormant market force establishes as a market force wherein it can make a significant impact. Why, what are the problems with health insurance sector? I, it, it is perhaps getting dragged with the other market forces which want to increase the cost of healthcare services. So what happens is that high treatment cost results in high claim costs, which in turn results in high premium costs. So that decreases the business penetration because uh, masses cannot afford the high cost of premium. Insurance penetration in our countries in private domain is 5 to 6% in spite of opening of the economy since last 30 years. And we are caught in this vicious cycle of high cost and high premium uh, model. Wherein affordable or cost-cutting innovation may help us reducing the treatment cost by any means. And this will definitely benefit this sector. So this market force will be aligned in a direction to reduce the, reduce the cost and it will truly work as a market force and make a significant impact. Rather, these, uh, this sector should directly support the innovators or entrepreneurs like you for cost reduction and they can, you know, uh, enlist certain priority areas with major health challenges where that sector is facing certain problems and challenges. Now they can directly go to the industry and ask for, let's say we are having an idea challenge program, they can come up with a similar program and uh, invite certain solutions. They should rather provide their CSR funds for such a cause because one innovation can benefit millions of individuals world over. Rather, there should be some incentives given to the medical uh, uh, fraternities also, I feel. Just to mention, uh, health insurance sector in America spends about $3 trillion uh, to uh, so, you know, uh, pay for the claim costs and 1% reduction. Let's say our innovators, our efficient entrepreneurs from our country, we have a huge talent pool in our country. And I really welcome all of you for being present here. They have a potential to make a significant impact. So any impact there would save, let's say if it is 1%, we save around $30 billion annually. So that's a significant impact, I feel. And definitely we can look at their challenges and the challenges which uh, countries like America or any other uh, country faces and we can definitely come up with some solutions and this is not something theoretical I'm talking about. There are certain success stories and this is a company based out of Pune only and they are exporting patented US FDA uh, approved products. Getting US FDA approval is a very challenging kind of a process people feel but again this company has achieved that and again they are exporting uh, certain spinal implants at a cost of average cost of $4,000 per device as against uh, $5,000 uh, cost uh, you know, uh, supplied by American companies. And the cost reduction is by 20% on an average. So their market share today is 22% and they are able to save around 16 million US dollars annually in America. If the market share goes to, grows to 20%, they may be able to save around 160 million US dollars annually. So this is an example of low cost innovation and manufacturing by an Indian company with significant economic impact on a global scale, which in turn creates a win-win situation for service providers in healthcare, patients, health insurance companies, all based in America and a medical device company based in India. So this is a win-win situation. So this is what exactly we are looking at. So I want to pass a strong message to all of you that of course we have to look at these opportunities as well. And we definitely can come up with a significant economic impact if many more such 50, 100, 200 such companies come up uh, with solutions in for different uh, problems and challenges there. Just to mention about the uh, difference in the cost of certain healthcare services in America and in India, and again, where we have an opportunity, let's say for angioplasty and cost, of course, it's being already done, implant costs for certain uh, joint replacement surgeries, surgeries and uh, prevention for uh, diabetes, which I just discussed, and uh, early detection of uh, any disorder like cancer. So these are the, uh, you know, opportunity areas for us. 
we are trying to come up with a new question and we please keep this in mind wherever it is feasible maybe of course we are making an attempt that this equation is set you know earliest and on a larger scale but at any point of time if you can connect with these stakeholders who are promoting affordability uh, specifically the health insurance uh, sector which act acts, acts as a catalyst the cost cutting innovations and stakeholders can come up together catalyzed by this sector health insurance uh, sector and it may result in uh, healthcare uh, being affordable and it may create some wealth also for that particular organization, especially for the government institutions in our country because sustainability and again, uh, supporting a huge, large number of patients which are coming to these institutions is also a challenge. So there, this could be of immense help. So this equation is very important. Just to mention about lobbying, which is legal in America, the industry which spends around 300 million US dollars there and I guess I, as against the uh, health insurance sector, we spends only 12 million US dollars there. So we just are trying to, you know, uh, learn these facts so that we understand the whole segment better. Just to summarize, affordable innovation can play a greater role to reduce the cost of service or a product making healthcare simple and affordable. We need a platform. Of course, it is our responsibility to see that the innovators, entrepreneurs and other stakeholders, you know, are helped out by through such, uh, such a platform or a forum, which uh, is a need of an hour. Health insurance sector should act as a major catalyst, being a market force to promote affordability in healthcare through affordable innovations. And innovation clubs, of course, the necessity is there, uh, making an macroeconomic impact and it may uh, go for wealth creation. So we can definitely sustain many such public sector programs also. Uh, either in insurance domain or service domain, and we can have an opportunity or a potential to become a low-cost manufacturing hub uh, in uh, this uh, segment, and we can truly promote Make in India, and uh, we can become a self-reliant nation. So we are just trying to look at the root cause of the problems, and one of the major challenges or the major reasons is a resource the cost, rising cost. And again, we are trying to see that rather than plucking the leaves, cutting the branches and cutting the stem, we go at the root cause, de-root a problem and in a non-traditional way. So uh, just to mention uh, how important a non-traditional thinking is. So I thank all of you for joining and uh, uh, being present here. And again, I thank uh, a university and uh, all the, and the entire team of Symbiosis for inviting me and uh, their entire activity. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, well, so on behalf of uh, Biases as well as uh, ISC, I would like to say thank you so much to you, sir. Especially, you know, talking about the health sector, I would like to say. Because uh, innovation, when it comes to mind, uh, health sector or health care, definitely could be a sector which, you know, many uh, students may not be thinking of. They are most of it thinking that to work under whom, maybe as in a profession of hospitality management or nutritionist and dietitian, likewise, and many more. Uh, but AI, as we know, it is really growing in the healthcare sector as well. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this was quite a very, very informative uh, kind of the presentation. So thank you so much. Uh, I, so I now hope it are... wasn't too technical to the students or all the, uh, uh, you know, attendees who have joined. Uh, I tried making it very simple, but again, certain terms we have to, I mean, that is the whole idea to, you know, provide the information from this side. So I hope yeah. it wasn't too technical. No, no, it was just fine. And we do have students of uh, BSc and MSc Nutritional Sciences and Diabetics. So they are pursuing it over there, over here in our university and plus a lot of other students from data science, those who are working on AI. So I'm very sure this would have been a very wonderful presentation for them. So uh, now the platform is open. If anybody wishes to ask any question to sir, you can try unmuting yourself. Any question from any participant?
Uh, if anybody wants to communicate with me and I, they have any query, uh, they can freely contact me anytime. My phone contact details are available because it yeah. happens so that, you know, students feel embarrassed at times because all faculties are around and they may feel that, you know, it's it's not a right idea. People may feel that yeah. this is a simple and a very silly question. So uh, please feel free, uh, all the students who are uh, attending this session, so they may communicate with me directly also. Uh, through mail or phone number, yeah. I am also uh, requesting the participant to kindly type their question in the chat box, which is accessible to me, in case they are not able to unmute themselves, uh, in case the settings are a little different. Anyways, I think it was quite uh, uh, informative and explanatory in the simple language that all must have understood it so well. And as you rightly said that maybe uh, if they have a question, then uh, you can mail or, uh, you know, you can uh, even call sir for that matter. Uh, I request everyone to kindly on their cameras so that we can take a pic, please. I request everybody to kindly on their cameras. Yeah, kindly on your cameras, please. I once again request everybody to kindly on their videos so that we can take a quick pick. All right, so I hope everybody ready. So just one more, please. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Samir, for this session. Sure and Thanks throwing and enlightening us, especially a different sector uh, in terms of innovation. That's what we call as healthcare. And during these tough times of COVID, uh, it's something like that quite required kind of a sector, which needs some fine tuning. So thank you so much for investing your time and thanks to the audience as well. So I declare this meeting as closed now. Thank you. Here we conclude. Thank you. Thanks.